The Calgary Underground Film Festival has announced the program for Cough Docs Documentary Film Festival taking place at Globe Cinema, and it takes place from the 22nd to the 26th of this month. Of the film screening this time out, there's a Canadian feature called Boil Alert about activist Leila Stotts, who shows the faces and personal stories behind the struggle of First Nations reserves to receive basic human rights, that is, drinkable water. Leila and Michelle Thrush, producers and also performers in the film, will be attending the screening. But first, let's have a chat with them about Boil Alert. First of all, I'm honored to have both of you here to talk about this <laughs> film, Boil Alert. Why did you want to tell this story specifically? Good, Leila. For me, it, it was a big part of my own story. So my own journey of kind of reclaiming this, uh, this identity, this this pride and strength in, in who I was as a, as a Mohawk, which hadn't been taught to me as a child. But the water, for sure, was like a, a big kind of calling, guiding force on that. And, and you talked about, uh, Leila and Michelle, both of you, the fact that this subject has been addressed. It's been addressed in the news many times, and it's also been the subject of more than one documentary film. But what I found compelling about Boil Alert is that identity is part of the catalyst as this story unfolds, as it pertains to water, but specifically in your case, that is being a Mohawk living in a, a a town or a city growing up in Brantford. Um, why did you feel compelled to go to the reserve and cross that line into a, a, a different world and and then subsequently tell this story? Yeah, well, I think there, you know, I, I, I'm probably not the only one to say this, you know, as, as so many of our people have been dispossessed from their lands and, and their teachings and their culture over, you know, these generations of of residential schools and all of the traumas of Indigenous people. So I don't think I'm the only person to say, like, we have this feeling of being called home, you know, this feeling of going back to your community, back to, you know, this this land that that knows you. So that, you know, I moved back to the, the reserve and you know, it was just this feeling of not fitting in, not, not really knowing, um, feeling that acceptance all the time from the community because I had, I had grown up in, in town and I didn't know what res life was like. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, that was, a, it was an interesting point when I, when I was first started making the film was like this feeling of, you know, well, how do I, how do I find the place where I belong? And as I went from community to community, I went to these reserves. I, you know, we, we, uh, a lot of the times we weren't in a hotel, we were living in a, a home in the reserve and seeing it firsthand with my eyes, seeing the impact of the indigenous struggle and how, you know, seeing these generations of trauma, it changed me as well. It was, it was like this, this experience of, you know, not being able to, not being able to unsee this and, and also finding, you know, I am meant to tell these stories. Um, a lot of those interviews and conversations, they just happened organically of, you know, me sitting at their kitchen table and genuinely listening. And there's a fascinating, and I'll address you, Michelle, with this, there's a fascinating way in which this story is told in that there are revelatory moments or moments of illumination and uh, dances folded into the into the film and also animation and the color palette kind of changes the color palette of the film seems to change as Leila you get a more of a sense of discovering who you are you find your your inner kernel and there's some fascinating choices uh Michelle what do you think was the most challenging thing in getting this whole story told well obviously it's always funding and uh trying to get enough money together to to support all the things that needed to be said um, this was truly a vision of um, Stevie Salas to, to bring this out and to bring Layla on board and uh, Brian Porter and James Burns and Jessica Matten. It was, a, it was, it takes a great amount of people to bring something like this together and to, to put it into the public view. So yeah, I think that that's always a challenge is trying to bring all those things together. And so given that water becomes symbolic of a bigger failing of the system, um, where do you think nowadays that joy can be found? I think that, you know, the hope is in our young people, in our youth, right? And, you know, Layla talks about um, when she goes back to the reserve, it's, 
you know, her experience was that she wasn't quite uh, feeling like she fit in there. But there's so many young people on reserve right now who are also working towards this. There's water protectors and, you know, people are, are growing up in a different time right now, knowing that there is not the same luxury that I had when I was a kid to be able to ignore these things. This is something that's happening all across the world, not just in Indigenous communities, but water is, it, it's just, it's a disappearing resource. And it's something that every human being needs to be aware of. It's something that we cannot be complacent about any longer. And Indigenous people are the ones that are suffering first, but it will be coming to all people if we don't uh, figure out a plan soon. When you saw the film uh, for the first time, was your heart made glad by the fact that there is uh, there's a fair amount of conversation that happens with a new generation of indigenous people and kids who will hopefully uh, carry the flag for the future? Um, does that seem? Do, do you feel positive looking forward? I do. I mean, there's got to be some hope in there, obviously, right? And it's not all doom and gloom, but mm -hmm. I think it's just a beautiful, this film is a beautiful artistic expression of how it's, how Indigenous people are, are being failed by the system of how water is not, it's a, it's an absolute travesty to think about what, what so many communities are going through right now while we sit in the comfort of our homes and talk about it. There's people that are truly suffering out there. And this film, this film brings a um, spotlight to that exact conversation. But there is hope. There's always going to be hope. And as I said, young people are, are doing so many amazing things, but they're carrying a lot too, right? Like this generation mm -hmm. coming up is carrying a huge load that we didn't have to when we were young. So I think that's, it's just really sad that way. And when you bring the film to Calgary, you'll both be on stage answering questions after, after the picture. What kind of questions do you anticipate you'll get? A lot of people have uh, questions about the, you know, what can I do? You know, I remember I was I was speaking at a school for a grade five class and this mm -hmm. little grade five girl comes up to me and she says, you know what? I She's like, I'm only in grade five. I don't have any political contacts. What can I do? And it just like hit me like even at that grade five, like a lot of us as grownups, can feel like that. You know, we feel like I'm only one person. What can I do? So that question comes up a lot as like, as an individual, what can I do? And I think that society has kind of put us into this, this mindset where we are individuals, where we're just one person. And it's been put programmed into us to kind of make us complacent that we can't, can't rise up. We can't come together when, you know, our indigenous teachings are that we are all one. We are all connected. So that, that idea that you're just one person, and it's not true. You, you're a one person connected to this huge whole. So, you know, even just sitting there, coming out to see the film, um, taking that step to understand what the realities are, uh, to internalize that. Uh, and I think my hope is, you know, that every single butt in that seat is changed. And for me, that's hope. You know, like we can one person at a time that sees this film feels the true emotion behind uh, what's going on in these indigenous communities. Uh, and they're they're not willing to be complacent. They're not willing to, uh, you know, just bury their head in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist anymore because of that emotional link that happens in the film that, that was just created so magically by this, you know, the production team and everyone coming together uh, for uh, for this very unique, very unique documentary. Well, here's to you, Michelle and Leila, for bringing this magic to the cinema as part of Cuff Docs, um, the documentary film festival, and that's coming up on Saturday. And it's a it's a beautiful, I think, testament to the power of working together to make change and uh, through an mm -hmm. individual, in your case, Leila. So thank you so much, and thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. I'm, yeah, thank you. That was Michelle Thrush and Leila Statz. They both appear here and have producing credits for a Canadian documentary called Boil Alert. It screens November 25th, Saturday night, as part of Cuff Docs, the documentary film festival presented by the Calgary Underground Film Festival. For more details about Boil Alert and the whole schedule, check out calgaryundergroundfilm.org.